at the halfway stage of the World Chess Championship. The challenger, Magnus Carlsen, is leading with two wins over the world champion, Vishwanathan Anand. So, can Anand hit back? Today he had the white pieces, perhaps it's his chance. He opened with his usual e4, and once again, it was a Spanish, there we go, bishop b5, this classic opening with white, and Carlsen once again played this rock-solid Berlin variation. So far in the match, he's done very well with this. Anand kept the tension with d3. Bishop came out c5. So everything as played before, and we had c3 previously. Today, Anand exchanged on c6. Now, he has done this quite a bit before in, in his tournament games. In fact, so is Carlsen. So this, this variation is certainly not a surprise to Carlsen. The idea is that white damages black's pawn structure. You can see these pawns are doubled. So this d-pawn, it was a d-pawn, has been dragged away from the centre. So white now has a majority of pawns in the centre. Now at the moment this is only a symbolic advantage, but that can tell later on in the game. Anand has had pretty good results with this variation, actually. He even managed to defeat former world champion Vladimir Kramnik. Kramnik played castles, and well, it, I mean, it was a, a complicated game. Um, I mean, Anand has played here castles himself. He's also played knight c4. There's quite a lot of tension in this position still. But I don't like committing the king so early. I think I think Carlsen played a much better variation today. Instead of committing the king to the king side, which somehow allows white to target the king there, he played more flexibly. He played the bishop out here, obviously pinning the knight, so preventing any capture here. And, okay, Anand drove the bishop away. This bishop somehow doesn't have very much to do on c8, so I think it's a good idea to play this bishop into the game. Now, knight d7 from Anand. Uh, this is a nice maneuver. Very often in this line, the bishop, uh, excuse me, the knight comes via f8 to this lovely square e6, looking at these outposts. This is a very standard maneuver. You'll notice Carlson not committing the king. This is very important. For example, if Anand lunged forward like this, then if the king were already castled, then this could be an extremely dangerous attack. But in this case, black can hit out straight away, get counterplay on the h-file, and remember this king can still castle to the queen side. Black would be fine there. So Anand has to play a little bit more cautiously. Hits the bishop. Now, of course, the bishop could drop back. That is possible. But Carlson played very pragmatically, I think, and I think very sensibly, exchanging off that bishop for knight. That, as I said, that bishop doesn't have a huge amount to do anyway. Good move, taking away that square from the knight. The bishop comes out, and the queen here. Sound development from both players. And now, instead of going to the king's side, and you can see that white's pieces will be lined up perfectly, perhaps you could start advancing the h-pawn as well. Instead of that, Carlsen very sensibly dives out to the queen side, and the king is miles away from white's pieces and is in complete safety on this side of the board. So excellent opening play from Carlsen, really um, you know, making sure that Anand isn't going to get an attack. Now, the knight swings away. The knight wasn't doing much now on this square, so looks to find a better square, but it's not easy. Carlsen just builds up, putting his pieces in the centre of the board. I mean, you can see, very solid indeed. Carlsen doesn't look to have any problems. Now, here in principle, white has two plans. You can play as Anand did in the game, with h4 and h5. Or you can try and break with this pawn move. Now, I prefer in this kind of position to break with f2, f4. I mean, I think black would be fine here, but for example, white could try something like this, shift the queen out of the way, and then play for f4. And in this case, you know, this would certainly improve white's structure. 
he could knock out Black's centre pawn. I don't think this is um, a disaster for Black by any means. I mean, I, th I'm, I think Carlsen should be fine here because his pieces are so well placed in the centre, actually. Uh, but I think there would be somehow a bit more play for White in that position. As it is in the game, I, I have to say, I didn't like this from Anand. Not that it's bad, but I just don't think it puts enough pressure on Black's position. And now knight came to c5. Very often, as I mentioned before, this knight can come to e6 and then looks at these nice squares here. So this is a good manoeuvre, but Black isn't forced to do that. And and exchanged. Played g3. So he wants to advance and then be able to recapture with the g-pawn, establishing a strong centre. Well, let's have a look what would happen if white played this move f4. Now, if black exchanges, you can see that white has a wonderful majority of pawns in the centre. And we can see one of the big ideas for exchanging on c6. See that this pawn here doesn't have so much influence over the centre. This is what white wants. And here you could say that white has some kind of strategic advantage. But here, black is not obliged to take. You can play f5. And basically after this, I think there will be a mass liquidation of pawns in the middle of the board and that will end up as a draw. So Anand can't get in the move that he really wants to get in. Instead he moved his rook down but Carlsen neutralised this attack very very easily indeed exchanging off all the rooks. Okay this move came again Carlsen very sensibly doesn't exchange but instead just chopped off the rooks and you can see that black has now decent counterplay on the h-file. And an exchange. Well, you can say that, again, white has a kind of symbolic advantage because he has the better pawn structure. But after this... Oh, incidentally, white, of course, cannot win a, win a piece there uh, because black would take this off. And black wins a pawn. So Anand played here, and now white doesn't even have a symbolically symbolic advantage um, because Carlsen exchanges pawns, and you can see the position is almost completely symmetrical. This is dead even, and after a few more moves, the players actually repeated the position. There is nothing doing here whatsoever. Um, they just repeated the position three times, which means the position is... A draw. The game is drawn. Well, a, a very mild game from Anand. Uh, frankly, I was a little bit disappointed with his play, uh, but perhaps after the last couple of days where he lost, lost two in a row, perhaps that's understandable. Um, Anand said after the game, after the last two games, it's nice to break this result. I was hoping to press a bit, but I didn't get very much. Of course, Carlsen was very satisfied with the draw. He said, I have the lead. This suited me just fine. So there are only five games remaining in this World Championship match. Anand is going to have a really tough time getting back. But let's see. They play again the eighth game tomorrow. Do join me then.